going to move on here to a film which, unfortunately, due to grandparenting duties this week, I have not got to see, and that is Joyride. Uh, Andy, could you introduce Joyride to us? Yeah, Joyride is a road movie set in China as a young girl and her best friend go off to try and find her real parents. Deadeye is coming, by the way. Deadeye, your cousin? Hey, Audrey. Oh, hi. Hey. Deadeye. Where did that come from? You know, I think I get it. I feel like I'm going to get ganged up again on this one. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well, it's, <laughs> who's, who's seen it? Scott, have you seen it? No, you've I'm not. I've seen it. So this one is just Andy versus Emma. Andy versus Emma on this one. Andy, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. So this year we've had 80 for Brady. We've (laughs) had the book club, the next chapter. We've had the greatest days. And now we've got Joyride. What do all these movies have in common? A group of women go off somewhere uh, exotic, somewhere that's foreign to them. They get arrested. They lose their passports. They get drunk. They have one night stands. They eventually end up where they should be. They fall out with each other. They fall in with each other. And I never knew that it was so easy to travel from China to Korea and back again and back to England in such an incredibly short space of time without having to wait around to get visas. Uh, I thought the whole thing was ludicrous and ridiculous and preposterous. Now, I'm not the target audience, um, so and possibly a lot of the humour went over my head. I did chuckle a few times. But basically, I sat there thinking I was knowing what was coming next because I've seen three films, the three prequels to this already, and I, and it did. It just happened. So I wasn't impressed. I appreciate for a lot of people it's a lot of fun, but sorry, boring. <laughs> boring. Okay. Emma, your take on Joyride. I laughed my way through the entire thing. It was hilarious. <laughs> Definitely the target demographic. <laughs> Yes, I think so, Emma. Not a <laughs> 61-year-old. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, every, everyone in our screening had a good old time, it has to be said. And it is a shame because I, mean, I shouldn't argue because, you know, the Meg got le- lots of screenings from last Friday when it came out. But it has meant that because of that Oppenheimer and Barbie and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and it being summer holidays, the screenings of this... I like criminally late in the evening. Mm. We've only got like uh, evening screens at like half eight. I don't think it's going to get the audience it deserves because it is, it is definitely a good film for sort of the, you know, 20 to 30 somethings. And yeah, I think unfortunately just the timing is not great for it in the cinemas that just not got as many screens. But yeah, I think yeah. you've got a lot of, a lot of really fun actresses in it it is all a little ridiculous and yes you have seen it all before but it's actually quite nice seeing it from a different perspective culturally you know it's all over in china and don't frown at me andy i saw that about (laughs) chinese or korean culture watching this i have to say other than the fact that it's very easy to travel between the two countries no problem at all you you only need to be a k-pop star andy and you can get anywhere when you try that's true Um, that's true probably the k-pop stars could have got 75 kilometers from that trench onto the island (laughs) quicker than the dinosaurs thingies in the meg i I appreciate what you're saying and and, and you're absolutely (laughs) right the the, the, the 20 to 30 something to my screening seem to have a really good time Mm. and i appreciate i appreciate you just me what is the style of humor is it like the hangover Style of comedy, or yeah, kind of, yeah, it's kind sort of. of along that that line. Yeah, yes, yeah. bit of slapstick, I... a bit of let's pretend to be the greatest girls group in the world so we can get through passport control. I mean, come on, <laughs> you know, it was just <laughs> ludicrous. <laughs> you don't know, Andy. You are not a K-pop star. That's true, he, and I never will not. be. <laughs> he's not a K-pop star. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have right. a higher calling. <laughs> <laughs> Scores on the doors then, um, Andy. Uh, for the scenery, five. And Emma. Well, thank God, I'm giving it a nine. So yeah. by fourteen, that's I a, win. That's yeah. a seven out of ten overall flickering dream score, making Joyride, if you can see it, a. Ah!